Good afternoon, everyone. For today's lecture, we're going to discuss about genetic disorders. Prepare for a quiz on Thursday. Okay, huwag uh, kayo mag-alala because I'm going to give um, emphasis on the possible questions no, na pwedeng lumabas. All right? Uh, before we discuss on genetic disorders, let me review first about the structure of uh, the DNA or the chemical structure of DNA. Remember that your DNA is a a double helix, no? It is a polymer made up of your nucleotides. Uh, itong backbone natin, itong teal colored, is your sugar phosphate backbone. While itong mga sa gitna dito na, na colored, these are your nitrogenous bases. Remember that the nitrogenous bases are, are complementary. Ibig sabihin, they come in pair. Okay? Itong mga nitrogenous bases natin are the following. We have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Adenine will always pair with your thymine, while guanine will, will always pair with your cytosine. Now, there's a nitrogenous base present in your RNA, which is your uracil, which also uh, pair with your adenine. Okay, Remember that uh, there are bonds that, that hold together the DNA. Okay, uh, The bond which holds together the, the nitrogenous bases are your hydrogen bonds, while itong... Uh, nitrogenous bases natin uh, naglilink together with your phosphate backbone is your covalent bond. Remember the central dogma of uh, in molecular biology, no? Ito from DNA, by the process of transcription, it becomes RNA. And then RNA uh, will become your protein uh, by a process known as translation, okay? Kasi for example, yung R DNA actually during, during cell cycle, when the uh, during cell division, I, I mean, no? during cell division, there is process known as DNA replication. So, kailangan may, may equal co copies of genetic material or DNA para ma mabigay sa daughter cells. Okay, when, uh, when there is production of your protein, protein synthesis, kailangan muna ng DNA, kailangan yung genetic code ng DNA natin ay mapasa sa messenger RNA. Kailangan matranscribe yon kung ano yung mga instructions na ng DNA. So, ang nangyayari is that the DNA will ma-unzip ito. So, ang double-stranded magiging one-strand na DNA siya. So, kukopya yung, yung ano niyan. Kukopyahin yung ano tawag ito, yung genetic code. Kumbaga, yung instruction. So, via the transcription. So, yung messenger RNA natin, meron siyang complementary code na magbabasa doon sa single-strand na DNA. Alright? Ngayon ang mangyayari, may code na si RNA. So ang mangyayari sa sa mRNA, meron din siyang sequence ito, all right? Sa baba natin. So lalabas ito ngayon sa nucleus natin. Paglabas ng RNA sa nucleus, pupunta siya ngayon sa factory. Oh, meron na akong meron na akong instruction for production of protein. So ang um, production ng protein is via translation. So merong sequence 'yan per uh, isang trinucleotide or isang codon will will give you a, a specific amino acid and remember that the amino acid is the building blocks of protein no groups of amino acid will form your proteins and remember that protein is everything no halos lahat ng parte ng katawan natin is made up of protein just a combination of different types of amino acids all right so this is your nucleotide as i have said nucleotide is composed of your phosphate of your base and deoxyribose sugar uh, kung dna and the ribose sugar if RNA. Remember itong AGCT, these are your nitrogenous bases, and your T, okay, ito yung pinagkaiba nila, yung may red, red dot, or red spot na to. Kasi iba siya sa RNA natin, we have uracil. So as I have mentioned earlier, so ito yung central dogma, DNA to RNA to protein. And by the way, yung RNA can also reverse trans, uh, can also undergo reverse transcription, which RNA mag- uh, mag-reverse transcription sa into, be, uh, into becoming a uh, DNA, right? Now, itong sinasabi ko ngayon, no, no, a structure or yung yung codon na will 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 be read or will be translated into protein or to into amino acids. So ito yung first base natin. So this is the codon chart no found in messenger RNA. So remember messenger RNA lalabas siya sa nucleus ng ngayon kasi meron na, meron na siyang instruction so pupunta siya doon sa uh, pupunta siya ngayon sa machinery ng protein natin sa ribosome okay meron pa yung mga transfer RNA ribosomal RNA which uh, ano na yun uh, 
outside of our topic na yun. Uh, by the way, ito yun yun. Okay, yung codon chart natin. So ito yung first base sa messenger RNA. Malalaman natin RNA because mayroon siyang uracil. Alright? Okay, first base, the second base, and the third base or nitrogenous base natin. So uracil, cytosine, adenine, guanine. Alright? So pag nalaman natin, Three, ano kasi, what, what is codon? Codon is a sequence of three DNA or RNA nucleotide. So, tatlong letter yun or tatlong nitrogen space yun. Codon, tatlo. Alright? So, for example, if we have a, a codon known as your, for example, UCG. So, sa una na first, ang unang base, U, okay, C, o dito siya, and then G. So, anong yung amino acid na i itatranslate niya or ipoproduce ng katawan is the SER or serine. Thanks, sir. Okay. So, yun. That's how you read the codon chart. All right. So, before we discuss further on genetic diseases, let, let us talk about mutations. All right. Kasi basic itong mutation natin, no? Kasi uh, kailangan muna natin alamin yung mga different types of mutations before we go on discussing the different disorders. All right. Mutations. What is a mutation? A mutation is defined as a permanent change in DNA. So remember the word permanent, ibig sabihin forever nandun ka na. As pag meron talaga mutant gene yan, kahit mag-divide-divide yung cell mo, carry, carry, carry pa din niya yung, yung change na yun sa DNA. And remember that mutations that affect germ cells are transmitted to the progeny and can give rise to inherited diseases. Yun, as I have said, permanent na yun. And then pag nag-divide yung cell, okay, ma-inherit yan, okay, give rise to inherited diseases and pass on to your or transmitted to progenies. And remember that, that mutations can be either point mutations, frame shift mutations, trinucleotide, repeat disorders. Okay, while your point mutations, eh, under that, uh, we have silent, misense, and nonsense, nonsense mutations. Okay, first we, we, we talk about point mutations. What is a point mutation? A point mutation involves a change in a single nucleotide base within the gene. Ibig sabihin isang letter, remember? Kung nitrogenous base natin, A, T, C, G. Alright, so may change. Pag may change sa, tat, sa kodo na yun, pag may change ng isang nucleotide dyan, that is a point mutation. And point mutation is divided further into three types we have the silent, missense, and nonsense mutation. So first, the silent mutation. Silent mutation occurs when the altered DNA codes for the same amino acid without changing the phenotypic effect. Pag sinabing phenotypic e effect, ito yung traits na observable or makikita natin. Wala siyang effect. Okay. For example, ito yung no mutation. This is the normal uh, production of your lysine. Alright, so yung, at the DNA level, ito yung instruction. So, by uh, ano nga yung, ano natin, by transcription, so at the mRNA level, ito yung complementary base niya, AAG, which is, ano yan, it's transcribed or translated into your protein, which is your lysine. Remember the, the codon chart, okay? AAG will, will translate or will produce your lysine, your amino acid. So that is the normal. So sabi natin, silent mutation, ano daw, okay? Merong isang single nucleotide na nag-change. So instead of the C, instead of the cytosine, it is replaced by your thymine. So ngayon, mag-iiba na yung, yung sa mRNA level and complementary base pair niya. However, okay, it's just the same protein ang matatranslate. So wala tayong phenotypic effect or walang uh, trait, walang observable effects na makikita sa katawan because it's still lysine ang napoproduce. Alright? So that is silent mutation. May mutation siya pero hindi mo ma-observe yung phenotypic effect. Okay, how about missense mutation? Missense mutation occurs when the altered DNA codes for a different amino acid. Ito, iba ng amino acid ang mapoproduce which uh, expectedly mag-change ng phenotypic effect. So for example, ito. Alright? So normal natin TTC na na replace yung thymine sa, sa gitna no ng cytosine. Okay ng C. Now iba na yung at the mRNA level iba yung complementary base pair niya. And so iba din yung instruction sa factory natin. Magpo-produce siya ng arginine based on the complementary base pair no. So arginine na siya. Remember that or pwede ding magiging threonine nagiba for example naging guanine okay instead of your uh, your thymine, di ba? So, nagiging iba, nagiging arginine, nagiging trionine. Hindi na siya lysine. 
Okay, pag sinabi natin conservative, may sense conservative mutation, ibig sabihin yung napoproduce na ibang amino acid is uh, structurally halos similar. Okay, nakita nyo? Halos similar, no? Alright. While you're non-conservative as in iba talaga na structure. So that is misense mutation. Ibig sabihin, iba yung amino acid na produce, therefore, meron tayong phenotypic effect or meron tayong observable changes na na-observe or nakita sa isang uh, katawan or isang tao. Alright? How about your nonsense mutation? Nonsense mutation occurs when altered DNA codes for a stop codon okay, that causes premature termination of protein synthesis. So remember your, your stop codons natin. We have UAG. UGA, UAA. Okay, for example, ito, no? Okay, so meron tayong change in single nucleotide instead of the thymine, naging, naging adenine siya. So, naging UAG siya at the mRNA level. And remember, UAG is a stop codon which will terminate your protein synthesis. So, remember itong tatlong stop codons natin, na uh, UAG, UGA, UAA. Ang tinatandaan ko dyan is that pag may umiyok na bata, Wag, wag, wag uga. So, wag mo daw ugain yung do yan. Wa. Iiyak siya. Wa. It's me and my joa. <laughs> wa. Wag uga, wa. So, iiyak yung bata, kaya wag mo iuuga yung, yung ano. Alright? My God. Jeje mo na. <laughs> hindi na ano yun, hindi na yung me and my joa, wala na yun. Nag-trend yun. Um, for some time eh. Alright, the example natin ng point mutations natin. Alright? So first, itong normal hemoglobin DNA. So at the sixth at the sixth position, we have the glutamic acid, no? Alright? Now, na-replace ito ng val valine. Alright? So ito yung sickle cell uh, hemoglobin natin. So it is an example of your ano? Anong example nito? This is misense mutation. Alright? So uh, instead of uh, of thymine naging ad adenine okay and will uh, complement the tar base pair niya sa mrna is your uracil which will give rise to your valine so mara replace ng valine ang glutamic acid na normally present in your the sixth position of your beta hemoglobin okay itong sa baba naman itong silent mutation well nas nasabi ko na dito earlier no okay so pag nag-replace nag siya, same pa din yung amino acid kahit iba na yung uh, iba na yung instruction. So silent mutation. While your stop codon, ito UAG pa din no, wag, wag, uga, uwa. It's me and my joa. All right? Yun yung stop codon natin. Next is your frame shift mutation. What are frame shift mutations? These are uh, insertions or deletions of one or more nucleotides, not multiple of three which shifts the reading frame of the DNA strand. <clears throat> so remember, for example, ito yung, ano natin, ito yung sequence natin, ang nucleotide sequence. Alright, ito yung reading frame. So CAT, CAT, CAT. Isang reading frame, okay? Isang, another reading frame, another, alright? Pag sinabi nating uh, point mutation, wala, walang, walang change sa reading frame kasi na-replace lang yung isang, isang nucleotide. Alright? So, Patuloy lang din siya, okay? Abnormal but still functional protein product. Now, pag merong frame shift mutation, pag may insertion or deletion, for example dito, may deletion, so wala na. So, mag-move into, in, into another, ano tawag dito? Into another nucleotide para maging tatlo. Kasi tigta tatlo, codon niya. Three, uh, three, three nucleotide sequence, no? So, nag-iba na yung reading frame mo. So, hindi na siya cut, cut, cut. Ito na, cut, cut. Uh, ATC, 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 and will result to your truncated protein product, which is abnormal. All right. Another example here is your Tay-Sachs Tay allele. Okay. okay. Normally, kasi sa Tay-Sachs, kasi there is a, a deficiency in hexaminidase, hexaminidase A, your hex A. So the normal hex A allele, ito yun, CGT, AT, ATCC, TAT, GCC, ganito. All right. Now, with the sex allele, anong yangyari? There is insertion of four, not multiple of three. Okay? One, two, three. So, nag-insert ka dito sa gitna. So, ano nangyari? There is alteration of the reading frame. So, iba na talaga from the point of insertion until sa stop codon. 
Okay? So, meron tayong uh, as in a whole new world or a whole new a whole new protein yung mapoproduce. Alright? So, that's an example of your frame shift mutations. Hindi lang siya uh, uh, alteration of, of, of reading frame. Okay? Hindi lang siya isang uh, nucleotide. Alright? Next is your trinucleotide repeat disorder. So, ano yung trinucleotide repeat disorders? Siyempre, from the word itself, trinucleotide, yung, uh, yung tatlo nating, ano, uh, tatlong nucleotide na nare-repeat. So, ibig sabihin, for example, itong CAG, CAG. So, nare-repeat siya, trinucleotide, 1, 2, 3, and then repeated, CAG, CAG, CAG. So, repeated nucleotides, which disrupts the genetic function. Okay, so tapos na tayo. We go now to your Mendelian disorders. Remember that Mendelian disorders usually is the result of mutations in single genes that have large effects. And remember that mutations involving single genes typically follow one of three patterns of inheritance. No? We have first the autosom autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and X-linked. And remember, X-linked can be X-linked recessive or X-linked dominant. Okay, first, we're going to discuss about autosomal recessive or AR disorders. Okay, so inheritance pattern ng autosomal recessive. Remember pala yung autosome natin. So uh, Mendelian disorders can, can occur both sa, sa somatic natin, no? sa autosomes or sa sex chromosomes. So this one is your autoso autosomal recessive. The inheritance pattern is that, so recessive ba? Individuals must be homozygous for the mutant recessive gene, yung A8 expressed to disorder. So, kailangan double dose. Oh, kailangan homozygous siya. So, dalawa dapat yung recessive gene para mag-express siya. So, remember that. Okay? That's the autosomal recessive. And remember that homozygous are symptomatic early in life. Okay? Sometimes, ano talaga at birth, right after birth, no? Pwede talaga siyang, uh, mayroon talaga siyang symptoms. And heterozygous individuals, ito siya, ito yung mutant natin, yung pula, okay? Heterozygous individuals is a recessive gene, this is a dominant gene. Ito yung affected natin. Are asymptomatic carrier. So wala silang, wala silang symptoms kasi nga recessive ito eh. So wala sila symptoms kasi mayroon tayong dominant gene na, uh, na normal, okay? Both parents must be heterozygous to transmit the disorders. So for example, kailangan silang parehas na symptomatic carriers. So pag we, if we draw this under or using the Punnett square, ito yung mga result natin. So A, 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 small A, big A, small A, and your A, A. So ibig sabihin, meron tayong 25% or one fourth without disorder. Meron tayong asymptomatic carriers na dalawa, 50%. And then we have a 25% uh, or one in four offspring or chance of having the disorder. All right. Remember, homozygous dapat siya, no? For the recessive gene to express the disorder. And remember that many of the mutated genes encode for the enzyme. So, tanda nyo lang, pag autosomal recessive, usually or mostly uh, enzymes yung in-encode ng, ng mutated genes natin. And almost all are inborn errors of metabolism. Okay, so ito yung Punnett square na sinasabi ko, no? So for example, yung mutated genes, ito yung small letter C, the recessive gene. Okay, so kailangan yung heterozygous na, okay? Heterozygous, may dominant, saka may recessive gene. Ng both mother and father, kailangan merong silang heterozygous to produce uh, isang tao na merong disorder or merong symptomatic talaga. Alright? So, C, C, capital C, small C. Okay, alam nyo na yan, right? Okay, so, ito, ito lang din yun. Alright? So, 25%, okay, carrier father, carrier yung mother. Remember that, kailangan may dalawa kang recessive gene ang ma-acquire. So, itong recessive gene, the affected daughter, is affected. A affected daughter is 25%, no? Or ibig sabihin, one in four, uh, one fourth probability of having uh, a child with that disorder, right? So ito yung mga example natin na, autosomal recessive disorders. Okay. 
And I have said, parang inborn errors of metabolism, almost all are inborn error of metabolism, and also uh, mostly are enzymes. Okay, let's talk about some of the autosomal recessive disorders. First, we, we go with lysosomal storage diseases. Remember that inherited mutations leading to defective lysosomal enzyme functions give rise to accumulation and storage of complex substances in the lysosomes and defects in the autophagy resulting in cellular injury. So yung mga lysosomal storage disease natin, these are uh, autosomal recessive uh, disorders in which there is the inability of uh, to degrade complex substrate. No? Wala. Kasi normally, uh, the normal lysosomal degradation, so itong mga enzymes na to, A, B, C, degrade nila itong mga complex na substrate so that uh, pag na-degrade siya, uh, yung mga soluble, uh, or ma-degrade ma ma sila to, to form your soluble, yung maliliit na soluble diffusible end products. However, kung may mga uh, lysosomal storage diseases tayo, so there is either uh, inability of or deficiency of protein or abnormal na mga enzymes natin na hindi siya nakadegrade. Therefore, yung uh, yung mga complex substrates natin accumulate within the cytoplasm. So pag nag-accumulate yung cytoplasm, wala tayong cell killing, wala tayong autophagy. Pag wala tayong autophagy, uh, of course, the cell dies. Alright? The cell dies, meron tayong cell injury. Okay? So example of your lysosomal storage disease is your Tay-Sachs disease. So as I have mentioned, ito yung example natin kanina, di ba, ng frame sheet mutation, no? So this is caused by the ability to metabolize GM2 gangliosides due to lack of the alpha subunit of lysosoma hexosaminidase or HEX-A. And uh, uh, expectedly, no? so wala tayong hexosaminidase which will degrade your gangliosides. Gangliosides. So therefore, the GM2 gangliosides accumulate in the central nervous system and cause severe intellectual disability, blindness, motor weakness, and death by usually around two to three years of age. Okay. Another lysosomal storage disease is your uh, Neyman pick disease. Now, there are different types of Neyman pick disease. The type A and type B usually caused by division of sphingomyelinase, while your type C is different siya kasi yung defect natin is in the cholesterol transport. So for type A and type B, usually nagkakaroon tayo ng, uh, ng accumulation of sphingomyelin. Okay, ang pinagkaiba ng type A sa type B is that the type A meron tayong involvement ng nervous system or meron tayong neural, neuronal damage aside sa uh, uh, storage of sphingomyelin in your phagocytes sa MPS, sa liver, spleen, bone marrow, and lymph nodes causing their enlargement. Okay, in contrast to your type A and type B, type C is caused by defect in cholesterol transport. So, ibig sabihin, there is accumulation of your cholesterol aside from the gangliosides in the nervous system or yung mga tissues na teach in lipids, alright? Now, affected children commonly exhibit ataxia. So, meron siyang gait disturbance. Gait, ibig sabihin yung, yung, yung balance, alright? Dysarthria and psychomotor regression. Next is your Gaucher's disease or Goucher disease. Kasi yung ibang book, so gaya ng Hodgkin's lymphoma, some mayroong apostrophe S. Yung Goucher's naman, some may apostrophe S. Okay? It's just the same. Pero for the sake of our discussion, ito yung susundin natin. Kasi ito yung na, nasa, ano natin, eh, nasa book natin. Goucher disease. Alright? So this results from deficiency of glucocerebrosidase. Okay? So pag wala tayong glucocerebrosidase, uh, expectedly, we have an accumulate accumulation of glucose rebrocyte in the MPS system or the monocyte uh, phagocytic system. Okay, We have different types. Type 1 is the most common variant in which the Goucher cells or the phagocytes that have become enlarged na nag-accumulate siya due to cerebrosidates or cerebrocyte. Ito, ito yung example natin ng phagocytes with foamy or parang crumpled yung ano niya, cytoplasm rumpled paper cytoplasm, that's your Gouger cells. So the Gouger cells accumulate in the liver, spleen, and bone marrow. So ito yung mga, mga cells or mga tissues natin uh, within the monocyte phagocytic system. All right, causing hepatitis plenomegaly. While your types 2 and 3 are characterized by variable neuronal damage, okay? And remember also that there is strong association of Gouger disease and Parkinson's disease. Okay, next is your mucopolysaccharidosis, another example of your lysosomal storage diseases. So again, this results in 
uh, accumulation of mucopolysaccharides in many tissues. So, lahat ng, almost all of the tissues, no? Pwede sa liver, spleen, heart, blood vessels, brain, cornea, and joints. And remember that the affected patients in all forms have coarse facial features. Ibig sabihin, meron silang uh, frontal bossing, etc. Malaki yung panga. So, meron silang coarse facial features. An example of your mucopolysaccharidosis are your Hurler syndrome and Hunter syndrome. Hunter syndrome is a more milder form of your mucopolysaccharidosis. While your Hurler syndrome, itong associated with uh, corneal clouding, coronal, uh, coronary artery and valvular deposits, and death usually early in childhood. So itong example natin ng mucopolysaccharidosis polysaccharidosis. So, yung Hurler syndrome, again, pareha silang may coarse facial features. Yung karakteristik talaga nila. So, sa Hurler syndrome, you have frontal bossing, intellectual disability, we have corneal clouding, okay? So, hypertellurism. Pag sinabing hypertellurism, yung, yung distance ba ng mata is uh, abnormally uh, ano, abnormally large. Ibig sabihin, malapad, wide set yung mata mo. So, ibig sabihin, parang isda ba? Yung mata mo ari di sa gilid, ang isang mata ari sa gilid. Okay? Gape teeth. No? Parang isda, you know? gape teeth. No? And depressed nasal breed. So, hindi masaya ang kanyang ilong. Alright? And we have short neck. Okay? Yan yung features ng Hurler syndrome. While your, your Hunter syndrome, ito naman siya. Okay? Nose becomes broad. Tongue is enlarged. Cheeks become enlarged and rounded. Loops thicken and large head. Hearing loss etc. Okay, so these are your mucopolysaccharidosis and also hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, ang kulit naman ng picture na ito, yung liver, may smiley, smiley, pati yung spleen. Okay, next we go to your glycogen storage disease. Um, madami, actually class, madami itong mga, uh, mahirap itong lysos, mga lysosomal storage disease kasi sobrang dami nila. Okay, but we are going to, to pick na lang yung mga more important ones. Okay, so glycogen storage disease in every division of enzymes involved in glycogen metabolism can result in storage of normal or abnormal forms of glycogen, predominantly in the liver where it is stored or muscles, but may also occur in other tissues as well. So for example, first is your von Giers disease natin in which the liver cells store glycogen because there is a lack of hepatic glucose phosphatase. Okay, wala, nag walang nagde-degrade ng glycogen natin. So, ibig sabihin na store lang glycogen, hindi na use up. And therefore, so pag na-store yung glycogen or nag-cumate yung glycogen, it will result in your hepatomegaly. And since hindi nga nade-degrade yung, yung glycogen natin, hindi siya nagiging glucose, yung walang glycogenolysis, so there is hypoglycemia. All right? In MacArdle disease naman, there is lack of muscle phosphorylase, which results to storage in skeletal muscle and cause cramps post-exercise. Itong importante dito sa pump-based disease, no? There's lack of lysosomal acid as alpha-glucosidase in all organs are affected. And all organs are affected. But itong pinaka-importante, there is cardiac involvement in pump-based disease. Ang tinatandaan ko dito, the heart pumps blood, right? So pump, pump heart, cardiac involvement, right? Next, we go to your, tapos na tayo sa autosomal recessive, now we go to your autosomal dominant disorders. Now, the inheritance pattern in your autosomal dominant disorder, one dominant mutant gene is required to express the disorder. So, unlike yung autosomal recessive, kailangan dalawa or homozygous daw yung recessive gene to, uh, to express the disorder. Ito, since the dominant gene, okay, dominant mutant gene, only one is required to express the disorder. So, ibig sabihin, yung mga heterozygotes natin, meron kang dominant mutant gene, tsaka meron kang isang recessive gene na uninvolved, will, will express the disorder. Okay? So, for example, may, merong heterozygote na parent, tsaka meron isang uh, homozygous na, na hindi siya ano, uh, homozygous but uninvolved yung gene. So, we have a 50% chance uh, na... 50% of the offspring will have the disorder while the other two uh, wala, all right? So remember that some disorders arise by new mutations involving either an egg or a sperm. And remember, in contrast to your autosomal recessive disorders in which mostly are, pro uh, are enzymes yung affected, ito naman, ito usually ang mga structural proteins are affected. So ito lang din yung ano natin, no? So... Remember that isa lang na dominant gene ang kailangan so that may express siya. Si dominant gene, dominant mutant gene siya. So using the Punnett square, okay, 
Ito yung kanina natin, no? Okay, 50%. 50% are dominant. 50% are recessive. So, ito yung sa baba, yung dalawang small letter N does not have the disease or do not show the disease kasi wala yung dominant mutant gene eh, nandito sa taas. So, 50-50. Alright? So, ito ang example of your autosomal dominant disorders. So, madami, no? So, but mostly, mga structural proteins nito, gaya nito, skeletal marfans, L. ordanlos, osteogenesis imperfecta, achondroplasia, etc. Right? So, first, we go, so, ito yung mga autosomal dominant disorders natin, mga pili lang, mga pili lang ito, ha, is your first Marfan syndrome. So, what is Marfan syndrome? It is a connective tissue disorder that results from an inherited defect in extracellular glycoprotein called your fibrillin 1. Remember that your fibrillin 1 is important, diba? it acts as a scaffold para, para mag-produce tayo ng extracellular matrix or extracellular uh, connective tissue. All right? uh, and this is manifested by changes in the skeleton. The most striking is the long extremities. So, mahaba yung mga karaw-kaw niya. So, daw damang ba? Arachnodactyly. So, we have also uh, changes in the eyes, ecto ectopia lentis, and coronary or cardiovascular system in which the uh your your large vessels are weakened no so pwede magkaroon ng aneurysm and dissection so it has been it has been known actually that itong tao na to the one of the presidents in of USA no si Abraham Lincoln uh meron siyang Marfan syndrome actually some some also say that na si Michael Phelps meron din kasi meron daw siyang long bones or the span exceeds the height Okay, merong high arched palate, merong pectus excavatum and scoliosis, and the upward dislocation of, of, of lens. Okay, and long spidery fingers and toes, so lagba yung karaw-kaw, and also hyperextensible yung joints natin. And for the cardiovascular effect, ito yung dramatic talaga kasi mm -hmm. uh, the life expectancy of the person with Marfan syndrome is actually have uh, due to the abnormalities or complications related to cardiovascular system. So, may, meron tayong aortic dissection. So, pag na-dissect yung, ano, yung, yung aorta natin, uh, yung largest blood vessel natin, so, mag-pull yung blood, so, magkakang hypo. Uh, very dreadful or very fatal ito pag hindi agad na na, na naagapan. Right? So, that's your Marfan syndrome. Next is your Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. EDS comprises a clinical and genetic heterogeneous group of disorders that result from mutations in genes that either encode for collagen. Ito yung main, no? Okay, remember collagen, you're supporting, uh, supporting protein sa connective tissue natin, all right? And also enzymes that modify the collagen and less commonly other proteins in the extracellular matrix. Okay, so we have different types of EDS, wag din ang uh, masyadong anuhin yan, but the clinical findings, for example, in the classic uh, EDS syndrome is that skin joint hypermobility, atrophic scars, and easy bruising yun. Skin high or joint hypermobility, hyperextensibility. So, so very lax ba yung joints natin? Saka yung skin, very elastic yung skin mo, no? Okay, so yun yung, yung characteristic ng Ehlers-Danlos. So, ito yung example ng Ehlers-Danlos natin, no? So, merong hyperextensibility of the joints. So, yung, 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 yung thumb mo na poproduce sa may, sa, dito sa kamota, tapos ang imong mga, uh, pag if you if you stand straight para more than 190 degrees na yung 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 axis ba tapos mapuput mo yung yung palm mo sa kamay tapos nakatayo ka so kung kaya mo yan pwede ka nang sumali sa AGT okay okay and ito blanching blanching of the ano kasi yung affected din yung sa skin yung sa elasticity of the skin right and then another another sign of your Ehlers Danlos is that yung yeah, na-evert mo yung eyelid mo daw. Di ba nagaganyan kayo? Nagaganyan, nagaganyan ba kayo pag wala lang, pag trip-trip nyo lang, okay? Ay, yung dila mo, natatas mo ang imong ilong. So, medyo mahirap ito pag tango ka, no? Kay, kay ba, kalapad pa imong uh, kantuan sa imong dila, no? Unlike pag matangos ba, maano talaga, maano talaga yung, yung ilong, right? Depende kung dila. Siguro kung aswang, ne? Manananggal, pwede na sa... Ibig sabihin pala yung manananggal, may Ehlers done loss kasi na, nakakalik sila ng, ng ilong ng ibang tao, mga tiktik. Wow. Alright, next is your familiar 
hypercholesterolemia. So FH is an AD disorder caused by mutations in the genes encoding for your LDL receptor. Most of the cases, okay, your ApoB protein and activating mutations in PCSK9. Remember lang ito, okay, LDL receptor. And usually, uh, as expected, no, familiar hypercholesterolemia, uh, ito yung majority, no, due to impaired transport of LDL, transport talaga, impaired transport of LDL into the cells. Alright, so ito yung mga symptoms or physical uh, symptoms and signs natin ng uh, ng uh, hypercholesterolemia. Okay, so we have San Thomas, usually fatty skin deposits sa mga, sa mga joints natin or pwede dun sa, sa eyelids. Okay, San Thomas sa eyelid, known as your santilasma or cholesterol deposits in the eyelids. And aside from that, angina or chest pain. Kasi nga, you are prone to develop uh, coronary artery diseases kasi magbablock yung, yung coronary arteries natin. All right. So we are done with AR. We are done with AD. Now we go to your X link. Remember that X link can be also recessive or uh, dominant, but majority of the X link uh, disorders are uh, X link recessive. Now for X link recessive or XR disorders, the inheritance pattern is that males must have the mutant recessive gene on the X chromosome to express the disorder. All right. So so hindi uh, both male and female yung affected. Kasi ito yung characteristic ng X-linked dominant disorders. Both males and females are present. Right? Remember that affected males, remember yung, yung sex chromosome ng male is uh, composed of your X and Y chromosome, right? So affected males transmit the mutant gene to all of their daughters. Kasi if you, if you do a uh, Punnett square, so XY times XX, for example ito, oh, XY times XX, so all of their daughters are, ano, will transmit the mutant gene to all of their daughters. Ito yun, XX tsaka XX. Okay, ibig sabihin itong daughters na to, since meron pang isang normal na X chromosome, so it will somehow compensate. Hindi sila mag, kasi recessive eh. So it will not show the, the disease, but rather they are carriers of the mutant gene. All right? While 50% or 100% of the, the male uh, uh male offspring are unaffected, okay? Males are homozygous for the mutant gene kasi isa lang naman yung X chromosome niya. So pag abnormal pa, so yun, you express the disease, okay? Males express the disorder, right? While your daughters, okay, XX are usually asymptomatic carriers kasi as I have said, meron pang extra X chromosome na hindi affected, right? Asymptomatic carrier females, Okay, or with X mutant gene transmit disorder to 50% of their male offspring. So yung carrier na female uh, na, na pangasawa niya, yung normal na male, so 50% of their male offspring is affected. Okay? Kasi pag i-gawa ka ng panit square, so X, 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 Y, X, 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 Y. So 50%. So ibig sabihin, may isang may uh, 50% unaffected, 50% affected. So, kasi homozygous siya, isa lang yung X niya. So, it will it will manifest the disease, right? So, ito din yun, okay? Carrier mother, unaffected father. So, we have a uh, 50% chance of having an affected son, okay? Merong sakit. Tsaka mm -hmm. isang carrier daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is your... Uh, Mendelian disorders or X-linked recessive disorders. An example of these are the following. No? We have Yan Duchenne, muscular dystrophy, hemophilia A and B, chronic renal disease, etc., etc. Okay? So, tandaan nyo yan, ha? Anong tandaan nyo? Tandaan nyo lang dito, ito. Alright, next is your X-linked dominant disorder. So, as I have said no earlier, no, same sila ng XR except that the dominant mutant gene causes disease in both males and females. So, wala ng carrier-carrier kasi, for example, yung XX, di ba? Yung isang mutant X gene ng female tapos isang uh, unaffected na X. Pag dominant, uh, X-linked dominant, yung carrier na yun, hindi, affected pa din siya kasi dominant siya eh. X-linked dominant yung disorder natin. So an example of this one is your Alport syndrome and your vitamin D-resistant rickets. 
Alright, ito din yung example natin ng uh, XD. Basta yung affected son or uh, yung uh, affected yung male and female as long as they have the uh, the mutant X gene. Alright? Okay, for example, itong affected father, XY. Okay, XY, XX, and XX. So, itong may, ano tawag dito? Itong lighter color, yan yung affected na, or mutant gene. So, lahat na may affected na, uh, may light colored affected na mutant gene, it will, kasi dominant eh, it will uh, give you the 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 effect. Or ibig sabihin, affected yung daughter mo kasi dominant niya. Okay? Now, for affected mother naman, ano mangyayari? Itong lighter colored na X, yun yung affected or mutant gene. So, mangyayari is that, yan, affected lahat ng merong affected gene, regardless kung female siya or male, are equally affected. Right? Kasi dominant siya. Okay? Next is your chromosomal disorders. So, remember that chromosomal disorders these are aberrations underlying the cytogenetic disorders which may take the form of an abnormal chromosome number. So it's either the number or the structure of the, the chromosome in one or more of the chromosomes actually. So remember that uh, yung term na euploid, ibig sabihin, any exact multiple of the haploid number of chromosomes 23 or number 23 is called euploid. So exact multiple of 23 is known as euploid. Pag hindi siya, Pag hindi siya, ano tawag dito, hindi siya multiple of 23, that is known as your aneuploid or aneuploidy, not the exact multiple of 23. And remember that chromosomal disorders can affect both your autosome, uh, can either your autosome or your sex chromosome. So first, we talk about Down syndrome. So Down syndrome or trisomy 21, it is the most common chromosomal disorders and a major cause of intellectual disability. And it's associated with an extra copy of genes on chromosome 21. So another chromosome 21. Okay, if you look at the cardiogram, syempre na, na pag-aralan na natin ito during histology, mm -hmm. di ba? So may extra na, uh, din, extra copy ng chromosome 21. All right, so remember that patients with Down syndrome have severe intellectual disability. Although some now with Down syndrome, hindi man sila talaga, di ba? Meron pang na, parang nakapagtapos, etc., mm -hmm. di ba? So mental retardation, low set gears, etc. Merong gap between the first and second toes. Yun yung mga karakteristik epicantal folds. Di ba may karakteristik silang fasi, alright? Tapos na protrude yung yung tang, alright? So remember that maternal age has a strong influence. So yung mga yung mga tita no na late na nag na na nag nagbata ba? mga menopausal baby for example so there's a, uh, an increase or there is a strong influence of down syndrome with maternal age next is your trisomy 18 and 13 so similar lang din sa trisomy 21 so my extra chromosome 18 in edwards syndrome and my extra uh, third chromosome 13 in patal syndrome ang tinatandaan ko lang to 18 a a a a a l okay Trisomy 18, Edward Syndrome, and Trisomy uh, 13. Parang pag, pag dinikit mo kasi parang letter B siya, so BB, baba, 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 batao, batao Syndrome. So, batao. I don't know, ha? Hindi, baka hindi nag-work sa inyo, basta nag-work yan sa akin. So, remember this one, alright? Itong Edward sa Patao Syndrome, usually, uh, very lucky na yung, yung, yung patient na merong ganitong trisomy uh, na maka, ano yan? maka survive siya sa sa gestation or maka survive siya during the first uh, first month of life kasi usually ano talaga ito fatal ito okay namamatay talaga sila all right so ito yung trisomy 21 yung trisomy edward yung edward syndrome ganun din low set ears so yung ears mo daw arat na siguro sa sa liog <laughs> all right so micrognathia intellectual disability ganun din we have renal malformations your horseshoe kidney, same as your patao syndrome, parehas lang may rocker bottom feet, alright, cardiac defects, alright, so yun. Next is your chromosome 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. So mahaba siya, no? Okay, chromosome 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. Okay, anong syndrome niya? Chromosome 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. 
Okay, there is a deletion. So based from the from the word itself or from the from the term niya, there is deletion of band Q11.2. So it is a region in your chromosome, no? On the long arm of chromosome 22. Oh, di ba? Ojiva. <laughs> si ano, si Inuts, all right? So the resulting disorders from this uh, from this deletion syndrome are the following. We have the George syndrome and your velocardiofacial syndrome. Your D. George syndrome, characteristic nito is that there is thymic hypoplasia. Remember, pag merong hypoplasia, so maliit yung thymus natin. So there is diminished T-cell immunity kasi remember, di ba, nagbamature yung T-cell natin sa thymus. Okay, so pag wala nun, we have a deficient or a diminished T-cell immunity. So, yun, as well as your parathyroid hypoplasia with resultant uh, hypocalcemia. All right? While your velocardiofacial syndrome is a combination of your congenital heart disease involving outflow tracts, facial dysmorphism, and developmental delay. Next, we have your sex chromosomal disorders. First is your Klinefelter syndrome. In Klinefelter syndrome, remember that there are two or more X chromosomes with one Y chromosome caused by non disjunction of sex chromosomes. So my extra kang. X chromosome, no? X, Y. X, X, Y. Okay? Alright. So, anong nangyayari pag sa Klinefelter syndrome? Usually, patients present with testicular atrophy. So, maliit yung balls. We have sterility, syempre, no? And reduced body hair. We have gynecomastia. Ano pa? Unicoid body habitus. Parang female yung habitus natin, no? Okay. Parang gynecoid yung body, body form niya, right? It is the most common cause of sterility in men. So, mahaba yung legs, right? That's your Klinefelter syndrome. Another one is your Turner syndrome. So, there is partial or complete monosomy of genes on the short arm of the X chromosome. Most commonly, secondary to absence of one X chromosome. So, we have 45X. Also, mosaicism or deletion involving the short arm of the X chromosome. So, so, ang pinaka-common nito is our most common uh, disorder affecting the Turner syndrome, our most common cause is your absence of one X chromosome. That is 45X siya. Okay, yung features na involves short stature, mer merong webbing of the neck, so parang wala kang, uh, wala kang liog, okay, cubitus valgus, so parang, parang nakabend yung, yung, yung kamot mo. We also have cardiovascular malformations, amenorrhea, lack of secondary sex characteristics, and fibrotic ovaries, small fingernails, okay, brown spots, etc. Poor breast development. So ito yung pag nakaharap sa'yo, ambalan mo, naka, naka, nakatalikod ka sa ako. <laughs> Alright, sige. Next is your trinucleotide repeat disorders. The causative mutations are associated with the expansion of, of a stress of trinucleotides that usually occur or usually share the nucleotides G and C. The tendency to expand depends strongly on the sex of the transmitting parent. So, as I have mentioned earlier, from the term itself, manalam no now, nag repeat ang trinucleotides. So, yung kag, 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 si isang codon, isang codon, isang codon, nag repeat siya, kag, 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 kag. Okay, karang kag na. All right. So an example of your trinucleotide repeat disorder is your fragile X syndrome. So it is the most common genetic cause of intellectual disability in males and the second most common cause overall after Down syndrome. So again, tandaan nyo itong CGG ha. CGG, ito yung trinucleotide na involved in fragile X syndrome. Trinucleotide CGG expansion mutation in the familial mental retardation FMR1 change. So ano yung uh, characteristics na ito yung features ng fragile X syndrome natin. So again, we have coarse facial features then. We have broad forehead, okay, lapad ang forehead na pag mag Ash Wednesday ka maubos ang imong ang imong ash or ang ash. Oy joke lang ha. Elongated face, all right? Large prominent ears na parang si si Dubi. Si Dubi. Si du sa Saan na yan, di ba? Sa ano, sa Harry Potter. Okay, strabismus or cross-eyed and highly arched palate. Okay, it can also have hyperextensible joints, hypotonia, etc. Seizures, right? Next is your Huntington disease. Remember your FXS, your Fragile X syndrome, CGG. 
Okay, CGG expansion. Ito naman, CAG expansion. CAG. Ito na si CAG. Huntington CAG on HTT gene on chromosome 4. Alright? So the clinical features involve the following, no? We have increased involuntary movements, lalo na pag-progressing Huntington's disease. There is weakness. And since, and since may weakness ka, there is risk of falling, no? Sometimes, uh, meron silang severe depression and difficulty of swallowing and chewing. And since affected yung movement mo, or, or right, so there are also speech issues. Next, we go to your mitochondrial gene disorders. So several mitochondrial genes are inherited in quite a, num a different manner. A feature unique to mitochondrial disorders is that maternal inheritance. So rem remember M, M, maternal inheritance. Kasi ang egg cell natin is madami daw siyang mitochondria uh, okay, sa cytoplasm. Whereas sa spermatozoa, konti. Okay, few of or few. Uh, yun, few kung meron, right? Pero yun yung, yun yung ano natin, yung, <clears throat> yung evidence natin is that maternal, there is a maternal inheritance with regards to yung mitochondrial gene <clears throat> disorders kasi nga madami mitochondria sa iyo, sa iyo mga egg cell. Alright, diseases associated with mitochondrial inheritance are rare and many of them affect the neuromuscular system. <clears throat> so I'll give you an example of your mitochondrial gene disorder and one of which is your Leber hereditary optic neuropathy or LHON. Okay? Leber hereditary optic neuropathy is a prototype mitochondrial disorder characterized by your, ito yung characteristic niya, bilateral loss of central vision. So ito yung parang itsura niya. So this is normal vision and when you have the the leber hereditary optic neuropathy, there is a central loss of uh, vision okay, sa gitna. So, hindi ka, maka, ano, hindi ka talaga makikita or hindi ka makabasa. Kasi nga, yung peripheral vision mo, hindi mo naman, hindi mo naman kailangan yung peripheral vision mo sa, sa pagbabasa, yung central talaga. Right? So, noted between ages 15 and 13, so very young pa, no? and eventually leading to blindness. And other than that, no, meron din tayo ng cardiac conduction defects and minor neurologic manifestations. All right, that is an example of your mitochondrial gene disorders and usually associated with maternal inheritance, galit sa nanay, right? Next is your genomic imprinting disorder. So imprinting includes transcriptional silencing of the paternal or maternal copies of certain genes during gametogenesis, creating only one functional copy in the individual. So loss of functional allele or not imprinted by deletion gives rise to genomic imprinting diseases. So for example, itong maternal, we have the maternal gene from the mother, paternal gene from the father, father to, from the father, all right? Kasi P, father or mother and father, all right? So during gametogenesis, all right? So yung maternal gene natin, normally yung isang locus na dyan, nandun yung brother Willy gene and Angelman gene. In a maternal gene, okay, uh, imprinted yung brother Willy gene. So ibig sabihin ng imprinted, inactivated, okay? While active yung Angelman gene mo. Pero pag sa paternal naman, active yung brother Willy gene, pero imprinted yung Angelman gene. Pag sinabing imprinted, inactivated. Now, ano nangyayari sa Angelman uh, syndrome? Sa Angelman syndrome, deletion of the maternal chromosome. So wala, na, wala ka na ditong, uh, wala nang site of chromosome na yun. So wala, nang, uh, wala ka ng active Angelman gene. So meron tayong, natira na lang yung sa father or sa paternal. So ibig sabihin, yung active Angelman gene is not anymore present. Okay, uh, the same thing with your paternal uh, paternal gene. No? Once na meron deletion in paternal chromosome, so nadidelete ito, so therefore the active brother Willy gene is deleted. Okay, so natira na lang yung sa maternal. So kung ano yung nadelete, deletion ng maternal chromosome, that is your uh, maternal, okay? maternal chromosome or Angelman syndrome while your deletion of your paternal is your Brother Willie. So an example is your first is your Brother Willie. In Brother Willie syndrome, there's deletion again of your band Q12 on the long arm paternal chromosome 15. And genes in this region of maternal chromosome 15 are imprinted so there is complete loss of their functions. So remember sa Brother Willie natin, ano nangyayari, no? The affected individuals will have intellectual disability, short yung stature niya, okay? Hypotonic, Okay, parang parang vegetab, 
vegetable ba? Hypotonia, hindi gan, hindi maano ba, hindi rigid yung ano, yung muscle tone mo. Ano pa hyperphagia, palakahon na katambok na saya kay Sabel lang sa count count. Small hands and feet and hypogonadism, so maliit yung uh, hindi ko alam po ano, balls ba to? Wala siyang wala siyang penis, no? Okay, hypogonadism, so small penis. Okay? Penis or not, pass your PPAR. All right. Next is your Angelman syndrome. I believe this is the last slide, no? In Angelman, in Angelman syndrome naman, so ano yun, di ba? There is loss of the maternal gene or locus dun sa Angelman syndrome gene natin. Deletion of the same region from the maternal chromosome. And genes and the corresponding gene of paternal chromosome are imprinted. All right? So usually, patients with uh, Angelman syndrome, meron siyang... In, intellectual disability, ataxia, seizures, and inappropriate laughter or happy. Kaya tinawag siyang happy puppet. So, yung parang, parang nag, wah, na ganun ka, tatawa na siya. So, inappropriate yung laughter. So, kahit may, for example, may siguro may namatayan, pero tawa lang pa din siya ng tawa. So, inappropriate laughter. So, this is Angelman syndrome. Okay? So, maternal loss. Loss of your uh, chromosome or region of the chromosome in the maternal uh, chromosome, right? So I guess that's the end of our lecture. Thank you for listening. Uh, actually, yung notes natin, tsaka ito, same lang din naman. So I think you should focus here. Uh, I, 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 I supplement nyo na lang with your notes kasi similar lang din naman siya. All right, so...